This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one website platform that will help you stand out online, but more on them later. So I bought a new watch. This is my first time ever buying a Seiko, which feels weird to say as someone who's been into watches for a few years now. But this is my personal Seiko 5 GMT SSK003, and I really, really wish I bought this sooner than I did. It's not a perfect watch. I have some complaints and nitpicks that we will talk about, but it's a really dang great watch that represents real value for money. If you're new here, my name is Brittany, and on this channel we just talk all things watches. This channel has become a place where I've been documenting my watch collecting journey for the last three-ish, three or so years, and it's weird that it's taken me this long to buy a Seiko. So I got into watches kind of through osmosis, through my husband. My husband has loved and collected watches since the 90s, and he slowly got me into them. But because I started collecting through him, I feel like I inherited a lot of his tastes, and it's only now that I'm beginning to develop my own palette and my own style. And this is one of those watches that I feel like is a bit of me. So Seiko released three different Seiko 5 GMTs back in 2022. The SSK001, the black and gray variation, the SSK005 with the orange dial, and this one, the SSK003 or the blueberry with the blue black bezel and the dark blue dial. If you're not as familiar with this model, this has a case size of 42.5 millimeters, a thickness of 13.6 mil, and a 46.8 millimeter lug to lug. This is a very small wrist friendly lug to lug measurement and is a big reason why I bought this watch. 42 and a half millimeters would usually be getting a bit too large for me, but this wears far more like a 40 millimeter because of the short lugs and the Jubilee style bracelet that butts right up to the case. So here's this one on my five and a half inch wrist versus my husband's seven inch wrist. It's still kind of large on me and it does look better on my husband's wrist, but that's the harsh reality if you're a card carrying member of the itty bitty wrist committee. Back on the specifications, the Seiko 5 GMT has 100 meters of water resistance, a stainless steel case material, and hard lex crystal, which is a hardened type of mineral glass. On to the movement, powering this watch is the 4R34 automatic movement with GMT complication. This gives you 41 hours of power reserve, and it hacks, which is great for the price. Seiko quote this watch as having a tolerance of plus 45, minus 35 seconds per day, which is pretty not great. But I've been keeping a close eye on it, and in my experience, my tolerance has been nowhere near that. Mine has been closer to plus five, minus four seconds a day. Seiko is definitely under-promising and over-delivering in the movement department. Now, before I tell you what I like about this watch and why I ultimately bought it, we need to talk about today's fantastic video sponsor, Squarespace. Something you might not know about me, well, you definitely don't know about me, but, <laughs> but I've wanted to partner with Squarespace for a long time now. My husband and I have been working on a watch publication together where we could just share some of our thoughts on watches and this crazy hobby, but we didn't know how to make a website. And that's when we started using Squarespace. You can choose from professionally curated layouts and style options that fit your unique brand. Like, look how easy this is. This kind of stuff is not my natural gifting, okay? I'm not someone who can see something in my head, picture something in my head, and then make it happen. I need to see it first, and then I can think of how I would put my own mustard on it, if that makes sense. So they've got this thing called Fluid Engine, which allows you to choose your website starting point and drag and drop into the gray grid to make it your own. Then when your website's ready to go, which mine isn't yet, <laughs> Boom, it's easy to launch. If you're selling stuff on your website, Squarespace makes it super easy for your customers to purchase, accepting credit cards, PayPal, and Apple Pay. Guys, I'm such a big fan of them, I can't believe they wanna partner with me. So go check out squarespace.com for a free trial. Follow my link in this video description so they know I sent you and save 10% off your first purchase of a website domain. Thank you Squarespace for sponsoring this video and now, Here's the things I like about this Seiko. Now, why did I buy this watch? I was stewing on it for a while and I kept thinking, do I really need this? Well, of course I didn't really need it, <laughs> but I really wanted it. I've been wearing my husband's GMT Master 2 
a lot lately. The Rolex GMT Master 2 is probably my most worn watch of 2023, but I had a feeling my husband would actually want it back eventually. Mm. But I don't have Rolex GMT kind of money to go and buy myself one. I'm saving for a pretty big piece I'm buying myself this summer and I have a baby on the way. So I have to be quite intentional with my money right now. But I do have enough money where I can swing getting a Seiko. I've said this a few times, but it's true. Sometimes when we get a little too deep into watches, it's easy to forget that spending 400 pounds or just under $500 on a watch is a lot of money to spend. We get so used to normalizing spending 3,000 pounds on tutors and calling that cheap that we think spending thousands on watches is normal and it's not. But the price of the Seiko 5 GMT and namely the value for money and how much watch you're getting for the price was a huge reason why I bought this. For just under $500, you're getting a mechanical GMT from a mainstream brand and it's a great looking watch inspired by the discontinued SKX and specifically looks quite similar to the SKX 007. Design wise, this watch delivers more than the price would suggest with a combination of brushed and polished surfaces, applied indices, thick chunky loom plots and high legibility, the dark blue dial that complements the blue bezel. This is exactly my kind of tool watch. To put the price into perspective, the last watch I bought before this was the Swatch Blanc Pond Scuba 50 for £350, not including my train fare to London. This Seiko costed me £420, so £70 more, but you're getting a heck of a lot more watch. But I don't just love this watch because I'm a value lover. Some might even say cheap. <laughs> I, I find this watch an incredibly enjoyable wear. Back when this watch came out in 2022, my fabulous friend Luke let me borrow his SSK001 and it was just such a great wear. It was so enjoyable. It's an easy to choose everyday watch with a useful complication. It's funny, expense doesn't make a watch any more special or in any more enjoyable to wear. It really is just about buying the watches that you love. Okay, in this section, I'm gonna be highlighting some of the things that I don't like about this watch and addressing some of the things that other people don't like. For starters, the bracelet and clasp. <sighs> they are a very weak point of Seiko. The bracelet is actually quite forgivable. It's not as flimsy as I thought it would be. It's just the clasp that I really can't bond with. If you've experienced older Rolex models, I would describe these as slightly better than those. The bracelet itself wraps nicely to the wrist. No arm hair pulling, which is a huge bonus. The clasp is pretty simple, so no on the fly micro adjustments, but can be adjusted from these little holes on the side with a tool. I know that for the price, you really can't expect a groundbreaking clasp, and maybe I'm asking too much, but I do feel like a giant brand like Seiko could offer better. My last complaint is the no-click rotating friction bezel. I am so used to clicky bezels and that tactile feeling in your hand when you rotate the bezel that something just feels wrong when you move this bezel. Those are all my personal complaints. Moving on to other people's complaints, a lot of people have a problem with the GMT itself. So this is a collar style GMT. So to change that third hand to another time zone, you pull the crown out to position one. To set the date, rotate the crown towards you, and to set the GMT hand, you rotate the crown away from you. If you pull the crown out one more position, you can set the minute and hour hand, but there's no way to independently set the hour hand like you can on a true GMT. I know this is something a lot of people care about. I personally don't. <laughs> a collar GMT meets my purposes just fine. Another complaint I've seen people make is that it is not a screw down crown. This is something a lot of people get hung up on and some people won't even go swimming in a watch unless it has a screw down crown. Honestly, I think this is a bit silly, especially if your level of swimming is going to the beach on occasion with your family. As long as that crown is pushed in, nothing is going to happen. I completely understand feeling more secure when you physically screw down a watch crown, but I think this is a mind over matter thing. There's no way this crown is going to pop out from under the crown guards with the level of swimming most of us are doing. But yeah, that's all my complaints and other people's complaints, which feels like quite a lot, but none of these were big enough to stop me 
from buying this watch. These are minuscule gripes of an otherwise fantastic watch. Owning this watch for a few weeks now has only helped me understand why people love Seiko so much. There really is a charm to these, and I think this has just kickstarted me maybe starting my own Seiko collection. Ah, uh, more money. <laughs> Seiko lovers, what should I get next? What do you guys think to the Seiko 5 GMT? Let me know all your thoughts, feelings, everything in those comments down below. Thank you once again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video and don't forget to go check out that link in my description so they know I sent you over. And now let's thank the fabulous, gorgeous, wonderful Pope Tier Patrons. Patrons, I'm so sorry the song is gone cause I was doing watches and wonder stuff all week. But now your song is back. Thank you, Pope, to patrons. Thank you all to your patrons, but namely the Pope to Pope to patrons.